Hello reformers and welcome back to Mountain Blade Warband. Now when we left off we were still doing our siege thing and the Serenids were wanting peace extremely badly and in the last, well I think in the last day, in game day or so, they have declared, well are wanting to declare peace multiple times, about four or five times they have tried. but. We will not allow them to do that. Oh yeah, by the way, also, one of our vassals apparently took Shawa Castle. I have no idea how they did that, but apparently they did. I was waiting here for a little bit of time because this guy was attempting to besiege Tarama Castle. So I was just like, okay, I'm just going to stay here and see if we can get a siege defense because I think that would have been pretty fun to partake in. But as is the case many times with the Warband AI, it tends not to do things sometimes, so basically all he was doing was waiting outside, which I am not a big fan of. Now, as you can see here, I've actually revamped my army composition to consist entirely of Kurgit Lancers. I felt like we lost way too many Swadian Knights and Swadian Man at Arms in the previous couple of episodes, so instead I'm just giving them a bit of a break and I'm swapping them out for Kurgit Lancers. Now you may also notice that my money has gone down rather considerably, and there's a reason for that. I have given all of my companions much better body armor. As most of their other armor is pretty decent, I think Jeremus is the only one that really needs a better helmet. Yeah, his helmet is really, really bad. So that could really use a bit of an upgrade, and his sword could also use a bit of an upgrade, but everything else, absolutely fine. His shield, eh, it's not really good either, but well, what can you do? As you can see, this, this, this was their old armor that I swapped out. This was actually pretty decent, but it's not as good as what I gave them, isn't it? Yeah, it's not as good as what I gave them, so yeah. I'm pretty happy with the upgrades. I think I'm going to get them some better weapons, but at the time, I checked Halmar and Nara, and they don't seem to have anything good anything like really really good that I would want them to use so I'm just gonna forego that for now and we're just gonna instead attack Emir Gulad. Now this guy is a defector from the Kingdom of Nords so this might be a little bit difficult but thankfully he doesn't have any Nord Huskals so I think this is going to be a little bit easier than we may anticipate who knows but yes. Oh yeah, also I should probably mention, if you hear any noise in the background of the video today, then that will be either outside, because right outside my window there's actually, you know, work and construction going on, or it will be our neighbors, and yeah, they tend to make a lot of noise. So yeah, do bear that in mind if you hear anything, and I apologize for that. Anyway, we are going to be charging straight in against this opponent because well they have no cavalry to speak of with the exception of the lord himself and oh i love this this scene that we can create by doing this i mean just look look at the absolute craziness going on right here i absolutely adore that kind of that i don't even know that kind of atmosphere that kind of picturesque charge of the Kurgit Lancers going against the opponent in such a majestic fashion. And saying that really, saying that about, you know, a charge in a in a video game, that's that's kind of a bit over the top, isn't it? But no, I mean just look at the dust that is being kicked up by the horses and the various lances just glistening in the sunlight. <laughs> I'm taking it a bit far now, I think. I'm taking it a bit far, but anyway, the point is we are in a really, really good position. This guy does have a very big army, so obviously taking him out is a pretty big step to eliminating the Serenids because we don't want him to go into a garrison and then be like, oh, I'm in the garrison, haha, <laughs> you can't touch me. You know, that sort of thing. So gonna try and eliminate him before we try and take anything else because obviously the last thing that we took, what was that, Jamayed Castle or whatever? Yeah, that is difficult enough as it is because of course we do have to worry about Serenid Master Archers and Mamluks and things like that. Now I have scouted the nearby town of De Cuba and I was thinking to myself maybe we want to try taking that. Now the one problem with De Cuba of course is the fact that it does have about 350 units inside and 
The funny thing about this is that the ratio of units is not even that bad. And by ratio, I'm talking about the composition of Master Archers to lower tier units. So Master Archers, Mamluks, Guards, etc. In terms of, you know, their ratio to the recruits and various other lower tier units. We do have to fight this guy for a second round. But as you could see, we actually lost no units whatsoever. Which is absolutely insane in my opinion. I mean, just... The, the power, the power of a full cavalry army, I mean, this would happen just the same with Swadian Knights and things like that, but I think it does help a little bit for the Kurgit Lancers to have actual Lancers. I know that Swadian Knights do carry Lancers sometimes, not all the time, but yeah, this is just an absolute massacre, really an absolute massacre. Anyway, as I was saying, I, th I think the ratio of Master Archers in De Cuba is basically... Mm, well, a little bit less than what it is, it's actually a lot less, than what it is in a castle. So, for example, you know, you know those castles that we've been dealing with. Those castles have about, I don't know, about 30 to 40, maybe even 50, some of them, Master Archers inside. And of course, Master Archers, they are the, the main problem for us, really. They were just absolutely tearing us apart. And in De Cuba, they have about the same. They have about the same number of Master Archers, even though the density of unit is a lot greater. So we are in a really, really good position. I was hopeful that I'd be able to let him go. I'm actually not going to be taking anything at all here. I'm probably going to be taking this shield, and I'll give that to Jeremus. I'm going to give him the one-handed war axe as well, because... Well, he needs, a, he needs a better weapon, doesn't he? He needs a better weapon and a better shield. I'm not entirely sure if he'll be able to use this weapon, because it does require a strength level, and he does have 9 strength, so that's good. Otherwise, all of his other gear is reasonable. I mean, I, I need a new helmet for him, but otherwise, everything should be fine. So, Ferentus, oh yeah, get me that power strike, thank you very much. Oh yes. Alright, so there we go. Everything is going swimmingly, actually. Anyway, we are going to go and check out to Cuba, because as I said, I think because of the greater density of units, and the well, basically the same number of Master Archers, I think we should have a much greater chance of taking this. I mean, yes, okay. It does have 54 horsemen, and it does have 63 infantry. So obviously that is going to be a bit of a problem. It also does have many more Mamluks and many more guards than standard castles. But you have to think about the first units that you're going to be fighting. Hopefully the Master Archers are not going to be present in the first wave, of defenders, but I, I, I'm not really holding out much hope for that, because usually in these sieges, the AI or the game in general does like to intersperse and mix and match various tiers of unit, and it doesn't really obey the law of, well, shall we say the rule of, you know, units being higher in the list. It doesn't really obey that too much in sieges. But let's see. Let's see, our renown value for this is insane, 46, if we're able to pull this off. I highly doubt we'll be able to pull it off, but who knows? Who knows? Maybe we'll be lucky and, you know, maybe we'll surprise ourselves and the entire world of Calradia. And yeah, we'll see what's going on here. Now, I know that a number of you actually want me to use a bow. Now, I would be perfectly fine with using a bow if I had some power draw. But the thing is, is that I have various other things that I want to do. Uh, oh yes, we got him and he fell down. Yeah, there we go. That's what you get. Yeah, kick his face. That is what you get. Yeah, there we go. Anyway, the point is, that's exactly the reason why I tend not to go for a bow at the moment. If I had been planning on going for a bow, and if I had, you know, put a couple of points in power draw or something like that, we actually hit someone, that's amazing. But yeah, if we'd done that, then it would have been much, much easier right now. But as it stands, I don't know whether I really want to commit points that I could be committing to other things like leadership or... I don't know. What else do we have? Let's actually just take a look at King Barney at the moment. He is level 28, so if I were to put points in power draw, it would require... I don't know. It would probably require about three points in power draw to actually be a bit useful. So I'd require level 31 and I'd be only placing points in power draw, where I, I could be placing points in, I don't know, shield, or athletics, 
or maybe well not horse archery i feel like that's kind of a waste but yeah we could be placing things in I, I don't know points and other things i'm not entirely sure to be honest i mean maybe maybe we're going to need to because at some point maybe we're going to need a much more reliable form of ranged weapon because at the moment you know what we have you know, we have thrown weapons, and the thrown weapons are not particularly reliable when it comes to eliminating people from far away. But it seems like our Kurgit Lancer friends are doing an absolutely amazing job, and we seem to have already breached the defenses. Now, let me just ask you something real quick. Surely, because, you know, because we know that, you know, Kurgit Lancers, they're not the best. You know, they're not the worst either. I don't think they are the worst cavalry. I think the Vagia's cavalry might be worse. I'm not entirely sure, but anyway, the point is, why are Swadian knights and Swadian man-at-arms not able to penetrate the defenses of a castle easier than Kurgit Lancers have penetrated the defenses of a town? That is, in my opinion, incredibly perplexing. I don't know how they have been able to do this, but they have. As you can plainly see, they've been able to get into the battlements with little to no effort whatsoever. I'm very surprised, as you can no doubt tell. Not entirely sure what's going on there, but look at this. We're, we're, we're able to just roam around freely. Jeremus is still alive as well, so we have a bunch of extremely good luck. Maybe it's just because I've replaced our companion's armor. I haven't seen any of our companions die so far, so I suppose that might be contributing a little bit to our success, because as we know, you know, companions are generally very good at fighting if they have a couple of combat skills, and most of our companions do have combat skills. So, you know, obviously that is going to make a bit of a difference in our success ratio, but even even then, you've got to think to yourself, the bulk of our army, the bulk of our army are Kurgit Lancers. So, oh, well this is not good, is it? Wait, can I go up here? Oh, I can go up here. Oh, thank you. Thank you so much. I was extremely worried right there because I know that some mods, I think namely Clash of Kings, I think Clash of Kings does remove the doorway to this particular archery nest and you have to have ranged units to be able to deal with it. So that's <laughs> that's a pretty, pretty harsh thing to do. But yeah, thankfully in native, that is not the case and we're able to get by relatively easily. Now, here's the issue. You see all those archers down there? Yeah, they're, they're going to do a lot of damage to us. Okay, now, here's the thing. I am not sure whether I should retreat right now or whether I should use my crowd surfing abilities. Should I use my crowd surfing abilities? If I do, I think we're probably going to be in a really, really bad position. But if I don't, we're also going to be in a bad position because... We have to then go up against all of the archers. I, I don't know whether this is a good idea. This is not a good idea, is it? No, I don't think this is a good idea, but I'm gonna do it anyway because it's fun. It's fun to maybe see if I can survive. If I'm gonna survive this, I'm going to be absolutely... What? How am I not taking damage against them? They must be using extremely bad weapons or something because usually I... Well, actually I don't take damage that much against Saranid Master Archers and Archers in general. Unless they're Nord Archers, or Vajir Archers, or Rodok Archers, or... Yeah, any any of the other Archers. <laughs> Not entirely sure what's going on here. Oh, and it seems like our rein... Oh, no. Our reinforcements? Are you serious? Did we really? Ah, uh, okay. So, yes. It seems like we have a slight problem here. The problem being that our reinforcement... Oh, our reinforcements are coming down here. Interesting. Oh, that's very interesting. They seem to have circumvented the reinforcements from the Saranids. Ah, this might actually bode well for us. I'm not entirely sure whether that is going to be the case, but we'll find out very shortly, I suppose. I don't know how many units we have to fight. I guess we have to fight the entirety of the garrison, which is a big problem. And yeah, I, I kind of thought that I would get taken out there, but that's okay. That's okay, because as you can see, we did lose... <laughs> a large amount of Kurgit Lancers, 26 in actual fact, but on the other side of things, we killed 196, well we took out 196, 141 were killed, but anyway, point is, let's take a look, let's take a look at how much damage we were able to deal, 148, 
Ah, uh, yes, I was hoping for a little bit more than that, but oh well, never mind. Okay, I think I think it's okay. I think it's okay. So now, what do we want to do? Shall we shall we start to level up our power draw a little bit? I get I guess. Why not? Let's have a little bit more flexibility in what we're able to accomplish here. So what else do we want to do? Do we want to get some more in agility? Do we want to get some more in in strength? Maybe get a couple more points in power draw. We could technically get five in power draw, and then we'd be able to use some pretty decent bows. And intelligence. What is intelligence going to get me? I suppose trainer skill. Trainer skill it could get me. So I guess I'm going to go for another point in power draw here. And I'm unsure what to do now, because what I'd like to do is basically retreat and then come back with a renewed force, because me having 53, that's not going to be enough to take a town from 150 units, and most of them being, you know, some Mamluks and guards and all that sort of thing, so uh, that's not particularly good, is it? Okay, otherwise, I have not really accepted any other vassals to join us. I could also call for a campaign, technically, if we wanted to take to Cuba now, but anyway, the point is, I haven't accepted any other vassals, because what I'd like to do is check the notes for King Barney. Actually, not the notes. I'd like to go and check the reports. Because as you see here, this is the list of people that I would be quite happy to accept in the case of them defecting and wanting to join us. So, for example, I'd be perfectly happy to take Count Grainward because he's a strong vassal. You know, he's perfectly fine. I'd like to be able to recruit him. So if he's available then I would be perfectly fine with, you know, taking him in there. So basically, I just need to look at this screen and, you know, take a screenshot or something like that and, you know, just re refer to it when I'm going through all of the vassals. So I think I'm probably going to do that off screen. I, I might do a little bit of it in the beginning of the next episode, but as it stands, I think we are going to end this one off here. And so I thank you very much for watching and I will see you next time.